You're listening to a Roddenberry podcast. Today is Friday, May 28th, 2021, and this is your daily Star Trek news from the Roddenberry Podcast Network. On today's show, BTS lets us in on the real origin of the Vulcan hand salute. Award-winning designer Doug Drexler reflects on his career with Star Trek and beyond, and I've got the answer to Tuesday's trivia question. I'm Allison Pitt, and today's show is sponsored by Every Plate. Try Every Plate for just $1.99 per meal, plus an additional 20% off your next two boxes by going to everyplate.com and entering the code DSTN199. For years, the Vulcan hand salute has been part of the DNA of the Star Trek universe. And now, thanks to K-pop phenomenon BTS and The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, one of the most beautiful moments in the life of our beloved franchise may have a new origin story. In a clip posted to Colbert's YouTube page just one day after their much-hyped appearance on the show, members of the South Korean boy band shared some new hand gestures to add to their now iconic finger heart. (laughs) And it turns out that one of those gestures is very familiar to fans of Star Trek. Making the familiar Vulcan salute, the youngest BTS idol Jungkook said, this one means live long and prosper. I invented it and Star Trek learned it from me. (laughs) He then explained, how is that possible? Because Star Trek takes place in the future. Thankfully, it was all in good fun, so there's no real danger to franchise canon. Not today. The Vulcan Salute first appeared in the original series episode Amok Time, as an improvised physical greeting by actor Leonard Nimoy, who as a child had seen the gesture made by Jewish rabbis as they invoked a blessing. Since that first appearance, it has become part of the heartbeat of Trek fan culture. It's made appearances from the International Space Station and the Oval Office, And last year, former presidential candidate Andrew Yang suggested it could replace the handshake in a post-COVID world. Now, if you're not a huge fan of BTS and don't appreciate all the dynamite song references in this story, that's okay. Life goes on. Live long and prosper whichever fan army you claim as your own. You can watch the entire BTS visit with Stephen Colbert by checking out The Late Show, now streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Academy Award winner Doug Drexler is a man who needs little introduction to the Star Trek community. For 30 years, he has contributed to the franchise in numerous ways, as a makeup artist, visual effects artist, illustrator, designer, and consultant. Drexler's talents have been used on four different Star Trek series and all four of the TNG films in addition to various collaborations, projects, and documentaries. Speaking with Air and Space Magazine, the 68-year-old artist shared some of his thoughts on what inspired him to pursue the arts and learning to thrive under pressure in the business of visual effects. The interview was conducted last December and is published in the June-July 2021 issue of Air and Space Magazine. As a child in the mid-1960s, Drexler was lucky enough to regularly attend the New York World's Fair and immersed himself in the possibilities of the future. When Star Trek first aired in 1966, it was a moment that Drexler said affected the whole direction of his life. He went on to say, It was so obvious that whoever was behind the show was a science fiction fan, which Gene Roddenberry was. So I was really impacted by the ideas and the way they portrayed them. Drexler went on to point out the finer details of the Stephen Whitfield book, The Making of Star Trek, which even by modern standards is still considered to be one of the finest examples of television production, decades after it was first published. It was an epiphany getting to read that book and relate it to this television show, Drexler said. That's really where I started training for a career in television production. More recently, Drexler joined the visual effects crew for the third season of the Trek-alike series The Orville, which resumed production in December. While the series is very much an homage to Star Trek, there are still artistic differences to overcome. Reflecting on his long career, Drexler laughed, every show is like a different circus. Every director is a different ringmaster. You have to be ready for anything. 
With that in mind, Drexel noted that stress is a part of the job, even though job may not be the right word. It's never felt like a job to me, he told Aaron Space. To read the full coverage of the interview, which includes Drexler's thoughts on comic books, his favorite Star Trek series and characters, and memories of his time working on Star Trek, check out the June-July 2021 issue of Air and Space Magazine, or visit airspacemag.com. I've got the answer to Tuesday's trivia in just a moment, but first, a word from our sponsor, EveryPlate. It's a long weekend here in the States, a perfect time for a spring clean. Why not start with your wallet and your dinner routine? You can start by shaking up your menu a bit with all the choices of meals that you can get delivered straight to you from every plate. Next week's menu includes choices like garlic Dijon butter steak with Brussels sprouts and mashed sweet potatoes, sticky umami broccoli bowls with bell pepper, ginger rice, sriracha mayo, and a fried egg, and buffalo chicken penne with spiced panko. It all sounds pretty complicated, but it isn't. I personally find their recipe cards easy to follow, the ingredients are easy to organize, and if you're lucky, you might even learn a new technique or two, like the amazing garlic pan sauce that I made with their rosemary chicken and roasted root veg. And I know I keep banging on about the sauce, but it was an amazing sauce. Lots and lots of butter. The best part is one meal from every plate is about the same price as a cup of coffee. So while your belly's getting full, your wallet gets to stay a little fuller too. Try America's Best Value Meal Kit, Every Plate. As a daily Star Trek news listener, you can try Every Plate for just $1.99 a meal, plus an additional 20% off your next two boxes. Just head to everyplate.com and enter the promotional code DSTN199. That's everyplate.com and the promo code DSTN199. And a big thanks to EveryPlate for sponsoring today's show. And now, it's the answer to this week's Trek trivia. On Tuesday, I asked you, composer Joseph Mullendore's arrangement of another composer's familiar tune in his score for the original series season one episode, The Conscience of the King, can be heard in the background at the cocktail party, where Captain Kirk meets Lenore Caridian. But what is the name of the tune? The answer, which if you happen to go and watch the episode, you'll probably get, it was the theme from Star Trek, and the composer was Alexander Courage. For more Trek trivia, don't tune in next Tuesday, and I'll tell you why in a second. It is a long weekend here in the States, uh, and because of that, we'll be taking off Monday and Tuesday of next week. So we'll be back on Wednesday with trivia and history and, of course, all of the news. If you happen to have plans, I hope they are very fun. And if you don't, I hope you have a nice, relaxing weekend. Well, that's it for today's Daily Star Trek news from the Roddenberry Podcast Network. Don't forget to check out the other great shows on the network at podcasts.roddenberry.com. Daily Star Trek News is produced by me, Allison Pitt, and written by Chris Peterson and Jack Brown, with trivia by David Powell. Today's show is sponsored by Every Plate. Try Every Plate for just $1.99 per meal, plus an additional 20% off your next two boxes by going to everyplate.com and entering code DSTN199. I'm back on Wednesday with more of the Star Trek news you need to know. I'm Allison Pitt. Have a wonderful long weekend and live long and prosper. This is a Roddenberry podcast. For more great podcasts, visit podcast.roddenberry.com.